Peter, I assume a lot of people would take one look at a scorpion and they'd get that cold shudder straight down the spine. They certainly do. One thing that I found is very interesting is that basically young children love to look at them, where adults seem to want to back away. Now, they're not a, a true insect, they're actually a spider relative. They are an arachnid, yes. Colour-wise, they just look sort of blackish and brownish. And they go down to cream colours, some you get with red extremities. And ultraviolet? Yes, they actually fluoresce under ultraviolet light. You get almost a yellowish to a greenish highlighting on sections of the body. It's quite, it's quite beautiful. And as yet, we're not sure what that is? No, no. Lots of theories, but we still don't know. But presumably, you'd, you'd hazard a guess that they can see a little bit into the ultraviolet? I would think so. Yeah. And obviously they don't, they're not going to eat um, mouse cubes or something like that. No, the unfortunate problem is and, uh, that you must feed them live prey. Hence the little words on all your buckets here that you're feeding them mostly crickets? Mostly crickets, yes. That's basically the cheapest, it's fairly nutritious. Do they do the standard sort of spider thing of um, sucking the internal bits out of them? They basically grab with, with one of their pedipalps or claws their eating jaws are at the front and they just basically crunch and, and dissolve and draw in and then they basically spit out the, the um, exoskeleton remains when they finish. If, if you're going to get these, you're going to have to source one of those adventurous pet shops that has more likely to sell things like snakes and whatever it is. That's, yeah, exactly right. And they also keep the other things that you need. For instance, uh, I use red, red heat lamps during winter to keep the temperature up. Some people go for heat mats um, at the back of the tanks, but they're, they're the sort of things that you are going to need if you want to give your scorpion a long, a, a long life. Now, I suppose some people look at these small containers, which are basically your Chinese takeaway containers. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, and say, oh, that's cruel to keep anything in that. What sort of containers are appropriate? I basically use um, fish aquariums. Okay. What and size? It will depend on what you're actually keeping. If, if I have a look at the size of this, this is a rat carry cage, I think, from memory. I've got a rainforest, uh, a rather large rainforest in there, and he's very happy. How do you handle them safely? Uh, I basically use a, a set of uh, tongs. I've got mine made out of wood because they're, they're, they are less harmful. And you basically grab them just under their poison sack on the tail but try not to suspend them. So in other words, lift them, put them into, onto something and then place them into the tank. How aggressive are they? Uh, you know, like a funnel web, if it's in a thing like that, is going to come at you, it'll, the legs will be up and it's, it's going to be advancing on you. What about these little fellas? Most Australian ones would rather back off than, uh, than, than uh, basically cause a fight. What can they do to you? If you handle them the wrong way and so on, what are the dangers involved in keeping them? Okay, the least danger would be a nasty pinch from the pedipalps or the claws at the front. The worst case scenario would be a sting, which basically means that they're going to cause something along the lines of a bee sting or maybe a wasp sting. Mm. The biggest problem is that if you're a young child or you're an old person or you have an allergic reaction, that, that can be very dangerous. Have you been stung? I have not been stung. I take all due care. <laughs> So their suitability as a, I suppose, a loosely defined pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a term that we don't really like. Basically, the younger person, say 12, 15, it would be very, very good to have uh, parental supervision. Mm -hmm. But for the older person, as long as you use the right techniques, they're fine. I think one of the things that would be important is to make sure that you either get care sheets from the, from the pet shops mm -hmm. or contact a scorpion club to get the care sheets. So, so there, there are specialist scorpion clubs? Oh, as far as the internet goes, yes. I think the, the main joys that I get from them is, A, if I have the right environment, then the scorpions are very happy. And the beautiful thing is, basically, uh, is to sit there and watch them at night. Because they are nocturnal? They are nocturnal, yeah. And being nocturnal for a lot of people that work through the day, but having a pet that you can actually watch at night when you're home is probably a fairly good thing. That's great, yeah. But, but you know, I suppose it's horses for courses. Some people like to give their pets a cuddle and a take up for a walk around the block. And I'm afraid with scorpions, it's all it's all viewing.